Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. February 14, San Valentine. We are in love with photonics, and today we will speak about lightning for automotive. We are really going to, uh, to understand what is happening with driver centric lightning and to experience the future experience of a driver inside the car. So, First of all, I would like just to share my screen and go forward, uh, showing where uh, we are. For this season of EPIC meetings, uh, we prepared a very interesting sequence of uh, meetings, going from quantum computing to lightning, uh, leading uh, technologies, uh, agri-photonics, medical, uh, satellites, and so on. This is uh, happening thanking to the great team of EPIC, where all the colleagues of EPIC are really addressing technologies, market reports, networking, how to assess to the markets, and also how to support uh, SMEs with mentorship, as well as uh, HR support and investment. And this is what is really supporting us. Nearly, uh, nearly 800 members, that is our ecosystem. I was really uh, happy to uh, appreciate, to, to make a special thank uh, on uh, explaining how we appreciate the support of the following EPIC members that through their sponsorship are supporting us, are supporting this uh, meeting. So with the spirit of an amazing journey through Europe, uh, I start from Netherlands, where we have Avantes, a company enabling spectroscopy solution for lighting application by integrated compact spectrometers. And Amnesi, which develops spectral radiometers, colorimeters, light meters, and 2D imaging system. They are used to measure uh, center stack consoles, dashboard infotainment displays, as well for white or colored light sources. Then we cross all the Germany. We go down to Munich, to Corning Laser Technologies. That is sponsoring this event with their strong competence in laser processing, and especially with their uh, competence in application for glass uh, processing in a, for automotive. And then we enter into Switzerland with Axetris, and with its multidisciplinary and high skilled engineering and manufacturing team, and with SUS Microoptics, the excellent excellence in manufacturing refractive and diffractive microoptics from healthcare to automotive as a key qualified supplier. Here uh, today, uh, we have a very interesting agenda, and I really uh, like uh, how. We worked with the support of my colleague, Jeremy Picot Clement, preparing this amazing agenda. So today we will have Rafael Mikalchuk from Swarovski, Matthias Rothfeld from Lightworks, Ganafati Sivakumar from Texas Instruments, Marcel Siller from Glowing, Raul Garcia from Microreleus, and Wilfred Noel from Sus Microoptics. But, Jeremy, tell us something more about what is happening this afternoon. Yeah, thank you, Antonio. Um, can you share the, your screen, please? Yes, I'm sharing yeah. the screen. Sorry, it's not sharing. No, I I'm don't think so, sorry, but it's okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Just for the, yeah. Yeah, that's okay for me. Well, thank you, Antonio. Um, welcome all. Um, I'm going to, to quickly present the value chain of today's OTM. We have about uh, 180 participants in this discussion today. Uh, we have a lot of people from automotive system integration and user lighting design and characterization, manufacturing equipment, uh, but also R&D, software, optics and micro optics and so on and so forth. Uh, so please um, be proactive today. It's a moment to feel free to ask any question you, you, you have. And if after the meeting you want to be in contact with one of the company here, uh, please go through Antonio or me and we'll make it happen. So thank you very much and uh, enjoy this meeting. Yeah.
And now let's start with our first speaker, uh, Rafael from Zwarowski, Rafael Mikatik. Welcome, Rafael. The floor is yours. Yes, hello to everyone. Hopefully you can hear me and see my presentation. Okay. Well, so <clears throat> I'm, I'm Raphael from, from Swarovski, and today I will talk about the topic um, which is maybe a bit astonishing to you because I will relate Swarovski to automotive sector, not to jewelry at, as you might be used to. Um, in particular, I will present to you how functional crystals can be used in smart decorative surfaces um, in automotive and automotive interior um, especially. Starting, starting this, um, this journey, I will show you first of all um, how, how our thinking about this topic started. So um, we were looking first of all into the interaction between touch and visual um, elements with our so-called functional crystals technology platform. Um, the purpose of this platform is really to combine also functionality with our decorative elements, which are crystals, in order to interact with users. So we enable the touch, um, touch interaction and also um, yeah, color, color change or display function in combination with our crystals. And this was part of our starting um, the journey. Um, <clears throat> once we <clears throat> Once we started looking into this topic, we, we have seen quite early that we need to also to define the application areas um, where we can use functional crystals. And what was um, also quite, quite clear for us was that we need to combine it with other future and emerging technologies. One of them, um, for instance, printed electronics, but also as you can see here, um, free from micro optics, for instance. Yeah? And we, we tackled these topics in, um, collaborative research projects. Um, some of them are still ongoing, um, like the Fabulous project you will hear about um, a little bit later on, or also the Libet project. Um, what has came out or, uh, come out of that is really that um, within the Libet project, we focused um, uh, on automotive collaboration. Yes. And um, here we looked into the topic of um, really matching printed electronics with um, functional crystals. Um, below, you see here now um, some, um, some impressions of um, what, where we went. So we started prototyping with um, some leading research institutions like um, DTI and RICE uh, with the capabilities in inkjet electronics printing or sheet to sheet printing uh, within the framework of, of an open innovation test bed for lightweight embedded electronics. And this gave us really the opportunity to experiment and use all the, um, yeah, the capacities and different kind of ideas to explore the applicability of our functional crystal platform together with printed electronics. Um, by, moving, um, by moving this kind of developments farther, we also had specific look into uh, really how we can integrate this touch elements, um, backlighting effects, and also um, a topic that was important for us like um, transparency of carrying um, substrates. And um, yeah, I'm happy to say that um, we even took this, um, this opportunity and this journey one level higher or one level farther. And we initiated a cooperation with the uh, um, Quartz company and its subsidiaries, uh, which are Brock Design and Poly IC. And um, I must say, we, um, we developed really a very, very interesting and special highlight, uh, which is one of our recent projects. And it is a human machine interface panel uh, for the automotive cockpit, which you see now here. Um, here we created really a unique HMI interface uh, with integrated functional crystals. Um, the solid scratch resistant full cut crystals um, are made in Austria and impressed really with the brilliance. Yeah. So you can see they are precisely cut uh, with um, depth effects and multi reflections. Um, but the actual groundbreaking kind of innovation behind this is just revealed at the second glance, I would say. And this is really that the crystals are not just sparkling and <clears throat> being a feast for your eyes, but they are also functional and they are treated with a specific touch uh, sensitive coating that allows 
also to, um, to interact with the integrated smart sensor technology um, that is found underneath. Um, when we take a further look into that, um, we see here displayed um, three different variants of the demonstrator that has recently been um, um, really showcased and shown during the CS in Las Vegas um, in January 2022. Um, and as you can see, it is really um, an elaborated way of shy tech functionality. So it's basically really um, hiding hiding the electronics behind some electronics effects, but giving functionality to the user. In this case of really an auto, uh, often, often car, an automotive interior. Mm. The concept shows um, three different modes, modes. The launch mode, which is characterized by really luxurious design in a subtle brown shimmering and gold effects. Um, it can be uh, lighted up also with um, magenta or orange and warm violet tones. Uh, the light and color designs can be changed using the touch control function integrated in the decor. And there's also the dark mode, which stands out with, with a more sporty design uh, and the crystals in smoked glass look. Um, all of this is also backlighted um, to give an atmospheric um, color illumination in more bold red and fresh green colors uh, with the glossy Swarovski crystals standing out really against the dark background. And um, the last one, the light mode, is really a fresh one which impresses with cool elegance and bright shades. Um, it really demonstrates the different type of geometric patterns um, and, and the light design to create really color effects and a nice atmospheric mood inside the car. And now it's time to really show you what all this is about. I have a short video for you. Uh, please take a look yourself. So you see switching on really holds the panel, interacting through the functional crystals with the whole panel by touch functionality, lighting up the whole element in different colors, color effects, and also with a sliding function here to regulate, for instance, illumination or other effects. Yeah, so stunning. I'm so proud to present it to you. This is, was done by Swarovski and Kurz and its subsidiaries, as I said, Burke Design and Poly IC. And that's what I wanted to share with you. Here you see who you can contact also to get further information about this nice demonstrator and um, the journey what I showed you. Great, Raphael. Uh, thank you so much for the impressive uh, presentation. Okay, maybe if you can uh, stop sharing uh, so we can also... Okay, I'm uh, speechless. Uh, I, I saw this video, let's say, a few weeks ago, not too much, when you presented in Las Vegas. And, uh, now, really, uh, without uh, words, but... Uh, it's good I if you are speechless, Antonio. <laughs> yeah, I feel that... It's a good, uh, it's a good sign. <laughs> it's a good sign. I think that, I think that I will start with the comment. Here we see uh, a great uh, brand of uh, luxury and jewelry going into the automotive market with, with a very high technology technological solution for the uh, interior lining. So here I would really like to, uh, to ask for the comment. Here we have uh, so many uh, companies represented from uh, automotive cars as well as T1 and T2. So there is really nobody that would like to comment here. Yeah, I would like to, to comment because I, I had the pleasure to see this uh, demonstrators uh, yeah, in real life Great, Matthias. in, uh, in Holzkirchen, in our company. And uh, yeah, I, I'm also speechless because uh, as uh, Antonio said, um, it's pretty interesting to see how two companies like uh, Swarovski and uh, Quartz with all our friends uh, in the Quartz uh, family uh, were able to build up uh, demonstrator with this high technology grade yeah this is a combination of uh, very yeah complicated uh, technologies which are well done uh, yeah, and well combined uh, in this uh, demonstrators with all the functionality behind that also 
with the light quality behind that, this was uh, yeah also speechless for our side. And uh, yeah, we are looking really forward to see more from you guys. Also, maybe with us together. I think there are also uh, different um, yeah discussions ongoing. So yeah, also from my side, from Lightworks side, uh, yeah, thumbs up for for this uh, demonstrators and for the work behind that. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Maybe Matthias. I make a question. Just to see. Okay, now, okay, we have uh, these demonstrators that is really impressive. Uh, which are the challenges that uh, you are you face and you are really facing in front? Uh, if you start, for example, a concrete project with uh, your customers. So, which are, let's say, here we have all the photonics supply chain. So what you need from this photonics supply chain, Rafael? <laughs> A very easy question, right? <laughs> no, I mean, um, as, uh, as, as um, Matthias Renfeld maybe mentioned, right, we, we need really to cover um, a lot of value chain aspects in all these developments, right? So it's, it's, it's starting, you know, with really... Um, all kinds of lighting, lighting questions where where Lightworks for sure is, is, is an expert in, right? For instance, yeah? we have the material function in our our glass substrates as such, right? We have sp very specific coating coating topics there, right? Also to um, support, for instance, anti scratch or hydrophobic coatings on top, right? To really see that. Um, um, you know the interaction is like lasting and stable, like like a user expects from it, right? Um, it goes then farther, obviously, that um, we need we need to surprise OEMs again and again, right? So <laughs> let's say we see that as a starting point of the journey. So uh, we are all the time looking for new innovative stuff, really to to stack it in in a way. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and and um, then again to build up on that really new demonstrators also because uh, the journey is not ending with us right we are in this in this game we are just um, part of the game yeah we are just as, uh, also a supplier you can say uh, to to um, OEM companies or even other tier um, tier suppliers in automotive sector and um, this is very much different let's say from the business that that we are coming from yeah where we are basically. Please, OEM. Yeah? <laughs> so, um, so for us, it's really an interesting journey, and then I think the main main challenge is really inside that that we need also to um, to work in a in a way that we well, that we really cooperate with other suppliers in order to make the maximum out of it. Yeah? This is, I think, really really challenging for us as well. Yeah. Okay, I think that uh, I will take the challenge as a. Photonics community. So here we have uh, really great ideas coming from uh, from Hausia, but this is really in the middle of Europe. So here we have, uh, and here in Europe we have the competence to develop such concept uh, globally. So, I so. Please, I'm just looking. Uh, I have all the small uh, picture of you, so I don't see nobody commenting. So let's go on. Let's go on stop. So maybe. Now we have uh, Matthias from Lightworks. So uh, we proceed with the lightning and we see also where is going uh, our journey. The floor is yours, Matthias. Thanks a lot, Antonio. So also a warm welcome from my side again to, to the community here. Um, also, we would like to um, show you today um, a little bit about us, a little bit about our work, where we are developing in interior and exterior lighting in automotive lighting and what are yeah, the challenges, uh, what we are facing uh, day by day. And of course, as uh, our old tradition, we would like to show you also our needs and um, what we are looking for uh, out you know, from, from the EPIC community. So I'll give you a Short introduction about uh, Lightworks uh, for everybody who is not knowing us. Um, yeah, we are a company with uh, 30 employees uh, in the south of Munich with our headquarter uh, since 10 years on the market. We are working in yeah, automotive uh, as well as transportation, as well as um, aerospace engineering, um, yeah, light system development. That means we are developing light systems for OEMs and also for, for the tier supply chain. 
And therefore, we have a big team of uh, optical engineers, of uh, mechanical uh, engineers, as well as electronical engineers. And also, since a year, uh, transportation design um, department in-house. So we can really combine here all the different uh, technical um, departments together and give you here best service um, you know, for your uh, light system development. And what is maybe um, quite interesting is our track record. You can see it here on, on the right hand side on the button. We were able with our team to um, yeah, support more than 260 lighting projects over the last three years. So now I would give you also a short uh, introduction in let's say our daily business. And this is what we, are, we are, would like to talk about uh, today with you guys. Um, yeah, what's, what's going on in, uh, in automotive lighting, yeah? And having the look to, to, the, to the left of the slide, we see here um, yeah, some yeah, of the, let's say, um, en vogue um, key applications. Yeah? When we have a look to car interior, we see more and more surface illumination as well as uh, dynamic lighting functionalities, such as Isolet, for example, is one of the big new um, RGB LED types. Uh, another big topic is, of course, projection systems. Maybe we will hear more about that in, in a few sec uh, minutes. And of course, uh, what's also coming more and more is what uh, also Raphael uh, showed us, yeah, there's the illumination of natural materials as well as uh, fabrics. So there are new players uh, in the market which has to be illuminated. So it's not uh, the, the standard plastic part which, uh, which, yeah, which has to uh, uh, glow. So we have to uh, find the new ways and new approaches uh, to bring light in yeah, parts and materials with, uh, with new uh, appearances. And I will show you later on also some pictures. And another nice uh, topic is, of course, laser textured um, illumination. So it means uh, we are working here with different companies also to illuminate laser textured surfaces, decorative surfaces, but we are using also uh, laser textured parts uh, to build up their yeah, optical systems. And another big topic around the COVID uh, situation here globally, uh, special applications as, uh, yeah, for example, uh, UV applications for, uh, for surface cleaning and so on. So switching to exterior uh, lighting on the right side of the, of the slide, of course, uh, we are involved there in, uh, in yeah, high sophisticated uh, module development, matrix modules, pixel light modules, all the new stuff what you can see uh, every, every week in, in the car magazines. But also, um, yeah, signal lighting functions are changing slightly. Yeah? So that means um, uh, also there we have a new focus for form and functionality. We are knowing all this um, wishing um, yeah, turn indicators. And um, this um, signal lighting functionalities are also a little bit more and more um, in combination with this 360 degree car body lighting. So we are trying here with, uh, with the tier ones and also with the OEMs to find new spaces uh, to, to put uh, the signal lighting functions there in and around the car. So um, besides this, uh, of course, uh, all the new illuminated grills, logos and radiant topics, what we can see on the market, also especially on the Asian market where we are involved. And this gives us also some challenges what I would like to discuss with you later on. And also an exterior uh, glowing will also have a speech lay later on. And uh, yeah, also here we are uh, looking for projection systems, dynamic uh, projection, also static projection. And uh, what's also coming more and more is uh, special applications all around um, sensor integration. And here we are talking about radar and leader integration. And this gives us here also from optical point of view, new challenges. So talking about challenges, um, I would like to talk also about chances of uh, all this new uh, stuff on the market. You can see here on the, on the left side, some uh, nice impressions out of uh, interior and exterior lighting. Uh, and yeah, what is, a, what is a chance for us also as a community in, uh, in automotive lighting? Yeah, of course, with all the new technologies, what we are providing here, we have complete new uh, freedom, complete new 
um, chances uh, to, to generate new applications, yeah, to have a new cre creative freedom here, also uh, to yeah, bring this to the OEMs, yeah, to give them new proposals based on our own technologies. And of course, this causes a new user experience scenarios and also new services, yeah, also digital services by talking about um, yeah, new uh, microcontrollers with uh, over-the-air update functions and so on, which will also uh, yeah, be a big uh, influence to, to automotive lighting in, yeah, in, in the near future. And uh, another big step, and this is uh, also um, yeah, a, a topic for interior as well as exterior lighting. This is a fusion of uh, yeah, functional lighting, yeah, all this, uh, let's say, legal lighting and uh, ambient uh, functionality. So that means uh, we are trying here also to find the right combination to um, having here um, yes, standard uh, lighting functions for exterior, but also for interior, uh, to have their warning uh, functions in combination with uh, ambient lighting functions, uh, yeah, which gives you a, a good mood, uh, a good uh, user experience inside. So coming back to uh, to the challenges, uh, of course, and this is maybe also uh, something what uh, what uh, Rafael is facing. Um, this is uh, of course all the integration requirements from uh, from the OEMs and also from the tier supply chain. Yeah, having their uh, new lighting uh, functionality doesn't mean that we have their more uh, integration in space, for example. Same from uh, energy consumption uh, point of view. Yeah, with all the EV cars, uh, we have a complete new discussion, also uh, counting there the numbers of LEDs and having a, a very uh, focused look um, to the voltage, what we need to, um, to yeah, lit, uh, lit up this uh, new functions. So another big topic is, of course, uh, architecture, yeah, lighting architecture. It means uh, also microchip based. Uh, we have to bring all the new lighting functions and uh, dynamic functionalities um, together into um, yeah, electronic um, yeah, architecture. It means we have to um, rethink uh, main body controllers and so on to make this happen. And the last point on this slide um, is uh, again, uh, focus to exterior lighting. And uh, we know all the new uh, yeah, demands also from Asian market. Uh, everything has to be enlightened uh, in in the future. But therefore, we have also to have a look to uh, to the legal requirements, the homologation requirements, also here in Europe, uh, to uh, ensure that we are able uh, to put their illuminated logos on the car, to put their new um, signal lighting functions in, in new spaces around the car body. And this is of course uh, what we are taking care. Here with our customers and partners uh, in you know, today and in the near future. So coming to my last slide, I would um, give you here also my wishes. Uh, one of my biggest wishes um, is of course uh, the uh, exterior RGB for for automotive exterior lighting. Yeah, there's uh, um, more or less nothing on the market today, which gives us the possibility to um, to build up here, um, yeah, um, yeah, color colorful uh, exterior lighting applications. Also looking to um, to um, topics like um, the autonomous driving. Um, here we are seeking really for an RGB solution for exterior lighting. Another big topic is, of course, uh, all the uh, display-like solutions. Everybody is looking for more resolution uh, in interior as well as exterior. And therefore, of course, micro LEDs uh, could be a solution. I'm also open for discussions for other nice solutions. And uh, my third point is a little bit more special. Uh, I'm uh, yeah, specifically looking for an uh, industrial application partner for optical fibers. So I am looking here for a partner who is able to handle optical fibers and uh, build them, um, yeah, or build uh, assemblies out of um, these optical fibers. That could be another big uh, wish. Yeah, then projection systems. Maybe uh, we have there. Uh, in a few minutes, um, uh, an answer to, uh, to our wish. Functional and decorative films are also uh, very welcome. Yeah, we are looking here always for 
diffusion films for uh, decorated films uh, to have their new uh, look and feel and uh, haptic and appearance. That's also more than welcome. And another big topic everybody knows is also from the car magazines, 3D displays uh, and other holographic uh, products are also um, yeah, well discussed in the automotive um, uh, background. Uh, and therefore we are also looking for partners and some technical discussions to understand what are here the next steps regarding this topic. So thanks a lot for your attention. This was my, my last slide. Here are yeah, our contacts and yeah, I'm really looking forward uh, to have a fruitful discussion later on. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Matthias. I think that uh, you put on the table uh, a lot of challenges, a lot of technical challenges and uh, there are really uh, a lot of work to do together. So I will Hopefully. say here, here the question from Matthias is uh, it's very clear. He needs uh, support to, to go further on several topics. I just noted uh, RGB LEDs, fibers, and so on. So who has uh, some solution? Who, who would like to start to cooperate with Matthias? I think that here we are really, or oh, while the people are starting to, to answer. Maybe if Matthias, you can tell us a little more about fibers. What do you think about fibers in the cars? Uh, yeah, let's say um, fibers, uh, talking about exterior uh, lighting, uh, fibers, of course, um, yeah, a, a very nice uh, styling um, topic because a fiber has this um, very precise character. Yeah, Having the, a, a fiber which is a uh, um, yeah, let's say illuminated over the complete length and you can have their yeah, very defined um, outlines uh, which can, can be illuminated, uh, for example. And uh, yeah, of course, this means uh, we need their um, good, good answers also regarding the integration of, of fibers. We need their good answer uh, to how we have to handle this um, uh, this fibers in in production also later on on uh, on consumer side um, this is what we uh, we have to discuss there and then of course um, we can talk about all the um, um, questions from the stylists yeah so what what is with the RGB fiber so how long can be a fiber how long uh, we can guarantee uh, yeah more or less homogeneous uh, light output these are then uh, let's say the next the next um, technical um, steps what we have to discuss also to uh, propose there a very um, unique a very stable system uh, to our tier suppliers and on the end also to the OEM yeah great great so meanwhile uh, I see that Alexander from uh, Nolder Cars and Concept uh, he would like to ask something more technical to you. Yeah, sure. Alexander, Thanks for, please. You know, for the introduction. So uh, Alex is my name, Nolden Carson Concepts. We are a small tier one, mainly focused for uh, motorhomes, defense, and also some automotive applications on exterior lighting. With Lightworks, we did partner back in 2016 for yeah, some development. Long time ago. <laughs> yeah, quite a while ago. I, I wasn't actually part of the company back then, but I just checked the reference. Um, re regarding uh, fibers, I know of uh, Munda and Mentor, two companies, not sure if they're present in this meeting. They have done a lot of fiber work, especially for the interior in yep. regards with textile and also decorative appliques and stuff like that. For exterior, I'm not sure there were a lot of concept works done on ESAL presented on, on the Vision, but also on the CS in Las Vegas, uh, two and four years ago, but I'm not sure of some companies. Actually, okay. I have a little question for you about decorative lighting in Asia and uh, also US. Do you see options, opportunities in the near future to integrate illuminated logos legally, legally, right? Um, without having the need to incorporate one-to-one -one the manufacturer's logo. So, for example, if you were to have the Audi rings, and then you want to have a nice um, eyebrow or you want to have a line through it, which does not represent the logo in its 100% shape. 
so from my point of view and my knowledge, it's um, much more easier when it's not the representing of the logo, because this is in uh, certain regions uh, forbidden. So you cannot have the illuminated um, advertisement of your own logos. This is a big discussion today in Europe. Um, we already did uh, illuminated logos uh, for the American market. So it's, it's possible uh, uh, the reference would be here, the Maybach emblem on the on the C pillar, on the exterior C pillar of the uh, current S class. This concept uh, was done by us uh, together with uh, Mercedes. So, and this is, um, this is, um, yeah, functional and is uh, for the, yeah, especially for the uh, US market homologated. So this, uh, this is- on the, It's on the side, right? It's on the side, on the, on the C pillar, yeah. So, mm -hmm. and this is, uh, yeah, with a contour illumination, pretty, uh, pretty nice also with printed electronics. Um, this is maybe a reference to say, okay, it's not as a, it's not the Mercedes star and it, uh, it worked. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Good reference. I'll have a look into this. You're welcome. Here I see also Wilfred who raised the hands. Wilfred, please. So I'd just like to mention, uh, first of all, very impressive, all the simulations that work now <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. has made our life also easier. So we do a lot of designing in house. As, as for fibers, I mean, this is uh, something we, we also keep looking at. Um, it's very, very complementary to what we, we do in micro optics. And there's actually a company in Switzerland called LESS or L-E-S-S. -S. I don't know if you know about them and yep. close to Lausanne. They actually have lighting products. They work in different industry and automotive is one of their industry that yep. they're targeting. They're already well established in other industries. And uh, an automotive is definitely one of their targets now. So, and I think they're in certain areas. I don't know yeah. all the details, but they're very active there. Okay, thanks a lot. Yes, I, I put the link in the chat. So if you need to know. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I received also a, a question or a comment from uh, Tri Li Kuang from AGC Glass. Would you like to ask directly? We have a lot of so many people, so small icons. Really? It doesn't happen. So Marcel, Marcel would like to say something. <laughs> okay, Marcel, yes, sure. Go ahead. So you should you should be able to hear my voice now. Yes. Yes. Now, yes. All right. Perfect. So, uh, first of all, very impressive uh, talk, uh, Matthias. And uh, while you're running into open doors, I would say, uh, if it comes to projection, um, I know there is a talk of mine later on, but uh, feel free to reach out to us. In uh, in any case, you you need something projected, uh, static wise, or that's the news digital wise. So, <clears throat> and we have to talk. Just a big invitation to you. Thanks a lot. Yes. So I think that maybe I make just a, a question really for curiosity. I see that now we are speaking about also projection system, uh, which could be the impact behind just the, uh, the aesthetic. So it could be something that could support, for example, uh, the uh, awareness of the car to a pedestrian, or they are still too far from this concept. I think this will be, of course, a big impact, but uh, then, um, yeah, let's say this question is a little bit um, focused to uh, what I mentioned on my uh, slide with the homologation and um, with all the legal requirements. Yeah? So we have here a big uh, discussion in Germany about um, the question if or are we are able as an OEM, for example, to uh, project a certain symbols uh, to uh, a yeah, street, which is not, uh, yeah, where the OEM is not owner yeah, of the street. So this means you um, will um, modify the, uh, the traffic situation. So, and this is uh, um, yeah, uh, a running discussion today. So this is maybe a, a topic what we have to discuss also with uh, Texas Instrument. Maybe we have there, or also with Marcel, Maybe you have there some inputs for us, but uh, this is what uh, what's my last status. 
that uh, everybody's um, yeah, a little bit uh, nervous because uh, there's no uh, uh, no uh, direct rule yeah, to say, okay, it's uh, we are possible uh, to do this, uh, or we are able to do this or, or not. And of course, uh, there are a lot of uh, possibilities and uh, very nice ideas. Also having a look to the last ESA and uh, all the other um, uh, big uh, ferries and um, um, discussion platforms. But now we are needing here really a, a legal statement to understand what's what's possible. And then, of course, when there is a, a, a legal framework, I think we have there a lot of new uh, possibilities to uh, rethink all the uh, capabilities of uh, this new modern uh, projection systems. Sure, thank you so much. Meanwhile, I see that Come also on. Ralph uh, would like to comment. Please, Ralph, uh, from okay. Inoptech. <clears throat> yeah, thank you very much. Um, I just want to give a quick hint here. Um, since you asked uh, the community about RGB uh, fiber um, couplers, um, there's a company in the west of Oxford. It's in okay. Oxfordshire. It's called AFE. Um, I put the link also in the um, chat box. Okay. And um, AFE has already built a module, but the fibers are rather small. I mean, thin. Um, we at <clears throat> in Optic, especially myself, I worked for 15 years in the uh, fiber industry. So we work with PMMA, um, different colors, et cetera. So if you need any sort of hints or let's talk, we, we, can, okay. we might be able to help in, in this regard. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Welcome. Uh, yeah. I see that also we have another question in, the, in other comments. I see Robert from Luminous. Please, uh, Robert, uh, make it directly your question. So we will. Uh, yes, hello, here. Matthias. Um, I'm from Luminous. We're actually an LED manufacturer. Um, what kind of uh, RGB LEDs are you looking for? Is that uh, RGB in one package or are these single color LEDs? Uh, really in one package. This is, um, of course, uh, today one of the um, requests. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I think we, we have the. Um, uh, a good portfolio, but uh, also uh, talking about um, yeah, packaging restrictions. We are really looking also for uh, yeah, RGB in one package. Okay, ah, interesting. So yeah, we, we're doing a lot for Pico projection. Okay. Um, and more and more also we get the requirement there to, um, to put, um, at least we have, I think, red and blue in one package. Um, but I'm also getting inquiries for future projects where indeed RGB could be an option too. Okay. Uh, we are facing this requirement now, I think more than three years. So okay. there's really a need. <laughs> so let's say it in this way. I'll be in touch. I, I reached out via LinkedIn to you. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. That's the spirit of the meeting. Make a cooperation. Okay. Antonio, I... we, have, we have another question yeah. from... Uh... From AGC, AGC Glaze. For yes. decorative film, haptic sensation, is surface texturing a solution? Who would like again. to answer to this question? Say again, please. I lost the last two words. Yeah. For decorative film, haptic sensation, is surface texturing a solution? Yes, of course. It's all oh, Raphael. It's, uh, this is also what, uh, <laughs> what the, uh, makes your demonstrator special, <laughs> let's say. Yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> just just type, type in Robert that she should also send us this uh, packaged LEDs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course, uh, this a haptic um, sensation. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a part of the human being. Yeah, so you have mm -hmm. to touch it and you have to feel it, and it has to be somehow special. So here we are really going to a driver centric lighting. So. The human is at the center, probably in the future also with the driver that is no longer uh, engaged with the driving because it's also we are going to autonomous driving. He will also play a little more around. And uh, I don't see any other qu questions. So move on. Oh, I see a hands on. Go ahead, go ahead, Marcel. So sorry, it's me again. 
no problem. Uh, Matthias, is uh, your RG, your wish for RGB projection, is it for static or for uh, dynamic image content? Uh, we are talking about dynamic, yeah. Okay, full dynamic. It, yeah. yeah. All right. Good. Well, I'll come to that later. All right. Okay, great. <laughs> But not too late. I think that now we are going really to projectors. And I'm really uh, happy to welcome uh, Ganapati from Texas Instruments. He will show us something that is uh, really new. Please, Ganapati, the floor is in the attention of everybody is to you. You have to switch. Can you hear me? Now, yes. Uh, Awesome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You have, a, you have a, evening, one window open about the WebEx meeting. Maybe you have, you have to close that uh, pop-up. Ah, okay. Then it's perfect. Ah, there you go. Go on. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I think we heard from our friends from Lightworks and Glowing. So I think here you are, we'll talk about projection technology. So good morning, good afternoon. Good evening or good night, depending on where you're joining us from. My name is Ganapati Sivakumar, and I work for Texas Instruments DLP Automotive Product Group. I manage the product that go to automotive interior display applications. At DLP, we have a really long history of innovation focused on our customers and their applications. We have been shipping our products for more than two decades now across a variety of industries and applications that requires projection-based solutions. For example, enterprise displays, the projectors that go in classrooms or office rooms and other places, cinema displays, more consumer or personal electronic-centric uh, projection displays, industrial or medical application, and more importantly for the audience here, we have products that go into automotive applications as well. Our products are automotive qualified using industry standard testing. Being a MEMS technology, our displays allow for constant performance over minus 40C to 105C, so without any derating de on the display performance. We have been in production shipping in volume since 2017. In 2017, Ford uh, Lincoln Continental introduced the first automobile with DLP technology-based head-up display, followed by 2019 when Audi introduced DLP technology into headlight with its e-tron sports bag. Later in 2020, Daimler introduced world's first augmented reality head-up display, or AR-HUD, in its 2021 S-Class. This is just name of few of the OEMs. We have a lot more that has come on the road and a lot more that's coming this year, next year, and years to come. When it comes to automotive, we heard from our friends at Lightworks, and probably we'll hear some more from Glowing. We work on a range of applications, both on the interior of the vehicle and on the exterior of the vehicle. Here are a few examples of our interior applications, which include augmented reality head-up display, transparent window displays, A-pillar blind spot displays, and others. And similarly, on the exterior side, we work with headlights, dynamic ground projection, and all other kind of dynamic exterior lighting applications. This slide here highlights our business model. We at DLP are basically a semiconductor chip supplier. Supplies DMD and the controller that's used to control the DMD. We also have some power management chips that are used to power the LEDs and others within the projection system. We then work with our tier one and OEM customers through an extensive network and a diverse ecosystem of what we call as PGU module makers or optical module makers. A lot of our partners have been with us for multiple decades and have a lot of experience and economies of scale to deliver cost competitive, high performance DLP based projection system. These can then be integrated into head-up displays or any other sort of window applications by the tier ones and then provided to the OEM. With DLP technology, 
you get multiple advantages or benefits when it comes to display applications. We provide superior image quality, the ability to enable true augmented reality displays, and also allow for unobstructed view with polarized sunglasses. Let's talk about the image quality. With DLP technology, customer can get highly saturated color displays with up to 125% NTSC color gamut when using LED light source and can go all the way up to 175% with a laser. Again, with its high efficiency, DLP can support high brightness that equates to more than 15,000 nits in the eye box for most of the automotive display application. Again, being a MEMS technology, we provide consistent image quality over the entire temperature range from minus 40 C to 105 C. Talking about the true augmented reality, DLP-based systems can easily support wide field of view that are 12 by 5 or even greater from an overall display perspective. A big advantage of a DLP-based PGUs are supporting really long virtual image distance in augmented reality because we can handle the solar load. And in addition to that, we can support the next generation of optical architectures that includes waveguide, holographic, HUD designs, and other micro-optics elements. Most importantly, DLP is polarization agnostic. Our chips, our DMDs do not care about the light polarization. So you don't require polarized light source that improves the overall efficiency and also allows for better visibility when wearing sunglasses. When it comes to interior display applications, we concentrate on multiple applications, starting from head-up displays. That spans from windshield HUD or windshield head-up displays that can be mid to large field of views greater than seven degree wide with less than five meter virtual image distance to augmented reality head up displays that are really large field of views of 10 degree or wider, allowing for more than 10 meter VID or virtual image distance. Another interesting area that we see a lot of momentum now is around the holographic cluster display. These are more driver centric displays that allow for large field of views and eye box with image directly being projected onto the windscreen. The image is in plane of the windscreen or at zero meter virtual image distance. This particular technology can come with a very small dash volume requirement that is usually less than a liter of dash volume to embed a projector within the dash. It also allows for easier windshield integration and provides for a cluster display that is a lookup display allowing the users to keep their eyes on the road and improve the safety while driving. In addition to these driver-centric displays, we also have transparent window display areas that we are working on that are focused for vehicle to passenger or vehicle to pedestrian type informational displays. We have a very scalable display portfolio that can support both single and multicolor projection displays. We also are working with a very fast-growing ecosystem for both projection and film providers. We can provide high brightness at lower power with our highly efficient display technology. So when it comes to DLP technology, we support our customers through a variety of tools, application nodes, and engineering design reviews across both the optics and also on the engineering side or electrical engineering side, EE design. You can reach us through the E2E form on TI.com and find most of our collateral within the DLP automotive product pages within the TI.com. In addition to the online resources, we also have physical evaluation modules, also known as EVMs, that are a great segue to getting introduced to DLP technology and start developing on DLP technology. With that, I'll come to the EPIC summary. As far as what we offer, we are the only automotive qualified projection display technology that can enable efficient bright displays with saturated colors. Our technology is light source and polarization agnostic. 
we can work with any sort of light source that's out there. And that makes us really ideal for next generation optical architectures like waveguide, HOEs, or other micro optical elements. DMD mirror performance is same at minus 40C as it is at 105C. That allows for a constant image performance over the entire temperature range. What we are looking for are automotive ready micro optic technologies that can enable a reduction of the AR HUD volume in the vehicle. I think with more and more augmented reality head-up displays coming into the market, there's no doubt that people love the technology. It allows to have a better HMI between the driver and the road. But I think a big challenge is reduction on the volume of the solution. So we are definitely looking for partners who can provide micro-optics technology that can enable a reduction on the AR HUD volume in the vehicle. We are also looking for partners and ecosystem who can help us with automotive ready windshield window film technologies that enable transparent displays for drivers and passengers in the car. In addition to these, we are also looking for light sources like lasers or, or other narrow spectral bandwidth illumination solutions that are automotive ready and cost optimized for our tier one and OEM partners. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so here I see really uh, a lot of uh, points that we have to develop uh, and to discuss. Uh, so here I, I, I wrote down very quickly. We have uh, a company that is really ready to go into the market with uh, a core components for adapt display and augmented, augmented reality but they need the support, the cooperation with the supply chain, with the value chain of photonics. I noted that you ask for company about micro-optics, company about emitters. So here we are. I think that I would like really to have somebody commenting. I, I don't want to call you, but I think who can tell something about, to Ganapati about micro-optics? Maybe, uh, Garapati, if you stop sharing so we can have a look on all the participants. And also somebody that would like to, to speak about uh, uh, argumentary. Yeah, great. I was waiting for you, uh, Wilfred. Yes, very impressive. Um, actually, I, I met Larry Hornberg once. I used to be a lecturer and I used his, his slides in my optical MEMS lectures many years ago when I was still in, in, in the teaching business. So it's, it's, it's still very impressive, still the holy grail in, in MEMS, so the, the DMD, my point of view, you know, in optical MEMS at least. So, and so I'm really, really uh, happy to see that it made its, its way into automotive into the automotive business and automotive markets. So this is it's very, it's not easy, it's very challenging. So uh, when you say you, I, I saw on one slide, you showed the full optical system. So this looks like a very complex system to me. Can you, can you uh, are there ways to make that smaller and easier or, or simpler and then this way more cheaper and more, maybe also more reliable for, for automotive applications? So. I mean, there's thermal shock and there's thermal range, uh, which is um, on an optical, can be tough on an optical system, not just on the single components. So, and um, can you comment on this? Yeah, so we make micro optics. I don't know if, if that might help if you're using this already in your systems yeah. or not. Yeah, definitely, I think from micro optics would definitely be a key part in making it smaller. As far as automotive ready, our solutions are already shipping in the automotive markets. They have been tested for all the automotive requirements and have been shipping since 2017. So I think we have almost half a decade with multiple OEMs and across multiple tier ones. So I think the solution is automotive tested and ready to go. But definitely I think we are also working on looking at partners who can further help simplify it and shrink it down. DLP as a system has gone into really small applications like AR glasses and others. So I think size and integration into smaller form factor is never a challenge. I think there are definitely ways where we can manage to get it into the required volume. Overall, when it comes to AR HUD, yes, I think it is a much more complex system because of the different requirements and it's not just the DLP 
the picture generating unit or the PGU, that's a challenge, but it's the overall optics that's required outside of it that kind of adds to the volume. And that is independent of the imaging technology. Mm. And that's where I think having a waveguide or a holographic optical element or any other kind of micro optics element that can shrink that entire optical architecture would be a huge benefit for a head up display type application. Okay. Thank you. Great, great. Uh, and then uh, Ralph, uh, yes, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, hi, um, my name is Ralph Noll from Inoptech and um, I was always intrigued by the MEMS, um, by the DLP processor. I live um, actually next to the Texas Instruments plant in Freising, Germany. And um, in 1995 already, I had discussions with them how to bring projectors into the market. So I know the whole history and I almost feel like part of being part of Texas Instruments since I live nearby and we, we keep chatting. Anyways, um, my question now is the following. I, I was quite intrigued when I saw your slide with the glasses, with the sunglasses. And um, um, we at Inoptech have actually developed an AR glass. Um, some companies like BMW Mini, they developed something a couple of years ago also uh, for augmented reality. And I think we can combine these technologies. Um, since you said you, you don't need polarized light, um, we can, for example, ensure with our technology that um, the background, so the sky, the street, everything is a little bit darker than the display. So in other words, you do not have to increase the brightness of your display if you enter bright areas. So we do this job for you. And uh, in, in that sense, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful combination, actually, if you combine your head-up display with our AR glasses. It's a system which synchronizes the frequency. So if you have a frame rate of, say, 100 pictures per second, and we put our glasses on the same frequency, we can synchronize this. And therefore, we can ensure, as I just explained, that you have a bespoke vision on the whole scene. So you can suppress the sun by 95% if the sun is directly in front of you, but you can still see uh, the images. And um, long story short, if you feel that we should have a talk and maybe cooperate on one of these projects, I'm, I'm happy to do so. Sure, I think this is, sounds very interesting. Would be love to connect with you and discuss more on this. I think definitely sounds a very interesting opportunity there. Very good. Yeah, thank you. Looking forward. Thank you so much. And uh, before to give the word also to the next uh, uh, participant, uh, please feel free to chat each other, uh, exchange uh, messages. And after the meeting, if you want to be introduced to anybody of uh, of the participant, just let us know. It's just enough that you drop a mail to myself or to Jeremy, and we are more than happy to introduce each other. So I don't catch the name, but I see the gentleman from Nanovox raise the hands. So please. Antonio, thank you. Um, Ghana, just one uh, question. I noticed in the optical train, uh, uh, multiple optics for the projection. Um, one of the things that we've been working on is gradient refractive index optics. Um, and using these optics, we can reduce the, the lens count um, and the grin can correct for geometric and chromatic aberrations. Um, and you know that's one of the reasons there are multiple lenses in a lot of applications is the first lens creates uh, the, the, uh, the aberrations and in the subsequent lenses correct for those aberrations. Um, so we've been working with um, a, a number of companies and, and uh, uh, applications for projection, uh, AR, VR, uh, by using uh, grin optics uh, to do this. And um, they're, they're nanocomposites uh, with uh, that uh, we've, we've uh, had to have mil spec um, and so it, it's, it could be one solution because I noticed the size of the package, everybody's trying to reduce the size. 
Um, and if uh, this could be a, an avenue, uh, we'd be, be happy to, to discuss it with you. Sure, it definitely sounds very interesting and definitely something that we'll love to reach out and discuss more about. Great, thank you. I noted, and also somebody has noted that also another uh, point uh, is about coatings. And uh, here I would like uh, to see the comments from uh, Guglielmo at, from Balzer Optics. Uh, he made a comment, but please uh, tell us something more. Yes, so I'm from uh, Mature Balzer Optics. Uh, we are in coatings uh, for different applications since several decades uh, and uh, are also very familiar with uh, all kinds of optical components for projection display, but also for, for DLP technology since uh, mid uh, 90s of last century. And uh, we also do a lot of uh, micro optics for other applications. So maybe it could be a good chance uh, to have uh, offline a discussion if there are any opportunities to, to support you with our components. Thanks. Thanks. I'll definitely reach out and yeah, that definitely sounds great. Okay. So let's say we are really going to cooperation and that's a uh, the best result of such meetings. I'm looking, there is no other make, no other questions. Uh, I see that there is another comment from Ralph, but uh, you want to, yeah, it's the same that you, you said before, Ralph, it's okay, yes. Sir. Okay, so I we are here on uh, speaking about the projection system. So I will go ahead with uh, Marcel from Glowing we see uh, application and uh, real products uh, of projectors. So we are go going uh, more on uh, the details and maybe Marcel will also tell us which is uh, which are uh, his challenges for us. The floor is yours, Marcel. All right. The no. slide, it's okay. Go to presentation mode. Oh. Our, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's a very big pleasure um, to be part of, a, as a new member, be part of the EPIC uh, network. And uh, especially um, want to shoot out a big hello to everyone in the community. Um, my talk today will be a, let's say, a mix of uh, basically three parts. The first part is about the, the company, what's glowing, what is the, let's say, the know-how behind glowing. The second part is about, let's say, more or less um, an upcoming product this year. And the third part, and maybe the most important part, uh, is about a real revolution in digital projection. Because um, I think maybe, or I hope, to give a lot of um, uh, these questions that, that popped up in the last uh, two um, uh, talks, uh, to give an answer to that. To give an answer of how to miniaturize a DLP or whatever uh, system digital projector as small as it can get. So stay tuned and I will um, hurry up to uh, don't waste any more time. So Glowing uh, was founded in uh, 2019 um, by uh, my wife and me. So we are 100% a family owned business uh, located in uh, Leipzig in the, let's say the middle middle part of Germany, eastern part of Germany. And we are focused and specialized on automotive lighting, or let's say on projectors only. And not only projectors, um, we are focused on MLA projectors. So for those of you who are, are not familiar with uh, this abbreviation of MLA, it stands for micro lens array. And it means that you create your image not from a single aperture, uh, but from an array, a two-dimensional, let's say, matrix of very, very small projectors uh, that superimpose their single images on the screen. Um, I'm sure Wilfried will, uh, or maybe will explain it uh, later on, uh, the, the parts that SUS uh, produces are based on this technology. And, um, well, I'm the inventor of that technology, uh, one or one of the two main inventors back in 2009 with um, about 100 patents uh, based on this idea and uh, more ideas popping up over the years. So we have an experience here like 
uh, 14, 14 years now. Um, as Glowing, we are a fully licensed MLA technology provider, so we can uh, we can produce and sell modules that have MLA projector projection optics inside. And for our um, customers or our business customers, we supply um, projector modules. So we are a tier one supplier, but we also provide um, consultancy service. So um, I, I want to keep that as short as possible. I think the main point in this in this slide is the formula uh, formula you see over there, which compares two systems that have same flux. And the left one is stands for the focal length you need. Uh, in Marcel, a Marcel, uh, we I see that is uh, always the, uh, is blocked the first slide. I don't see the next slide, so it's not moving the presentation. Do you see a big block of optics on the left hand side? No, no. What's first the glow? slide? It's glowing. See the first slide. Sorry. Well, you don't see that. Oh, I'm I'm very sorry. Give me a second, please. Oh, no, no problem. No problem. So you missed the the full first slide then. Okay, because. Give me a second. Try to go again in presentation mode. Um, we will we will stop. Come on now. It's now we see slide three. Now you see it. Uh, I don't know. It number two. It, it skipped when we when we turned into full screen mode. So maybe I will proceed like that. All right. So this was the first slide, but I don't want to repeat it again and again. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Uh, I hope you 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 got it. Um, so the main two. The main thing in this slide. It's a very short technology slide. Uh, MLA has some benefits compared to uh, standard projectors. It's much smaller. The system. It's um, when it's smaller, it has the same brightness. Uh, it has a good tolerance with respect to dirt, which has to do with the redundancy of the system, and it's pretty robust. The main point is the formula on the left-hand side. So let's say you have a number of microprojectors, let's say 100 projectors. Uh, the square root of 100 is 10. So you end up with uh, only 10% of the focal length you would need for a standard projector, resulting in the same flux. And um, well, those pieces that you see over here, or you can see it here in my hand are very, very small. So only three millimeters in thickness and uh, they are produced and sold worldwide like million, couple million of times each uh, per year right now. Um, the holy gray when it comes to array projection was the transfer of that technology of, or of that idea to digital projectors. And um, well, I'm pretty convinced we solved that issue. But be, before I come to the, the climax of my talk, um, let's first come to the product we launched this year. Um, on the left-hand side, so I now switch to slide three and you, you're able to see that, right? Yes. All right, perfect. So on the left-hand side, you see our current product, uh, a module with um, emits about 90. Lumens um, has some pretty good efficiency, but this year we will be able to uh, even increase this um, flux output to about 250 lumens. Um, we are about three months away from, from launching this new product to our B2B and B2C customers. And we were able to increase uh, efficacy as well as the total flux by decreasing the total volume of the box. So it's a pretty, pretty small projector. I give you a short demo. So in my hand, you see the projector, like a matchbox size. So I have pretty small hands. <laughs> so, um, and if I project that, if you have a look, it's um, pretty, pretty bright, uh, bright image over there. Maybe you can see that, which is about 90 lumens. So the upcoming model will be even brighter. And this is the um, a real world premiere. Uh, I'm very happy to share that with the with the full community at this at uh, this moment. Um, if you have a look at the uh, at the talk of um, Ganapati, sorry if I missed um, uh, mis mispronounce that. Um, maybe you remember uh, this layout on the left hand side. Um, the main message I want to send out is we can 
reduce the number of elements in a DLP projector from, from about, let's say, 10 to 14. It depends on how you illuminate your DLP in a single aperture DLP projector. We can go down to only three up to six elements. So we can really, really uh, take out complexity of a DLP projector because of this, as you know, off-axis illumination, illumination situation. It ends, uh, uh, ends up in a pretty complex system. So we can, let's say, transfer uh, the idea of, I, of array projection, which means we can scale the system only in two dimensions and keeping it as slim as possible, um, depending on the flux that you want. You need some, uh, some etendue or some, uh, let's say, uh, surface area of your uh, DMD, that's for sure. We cannot break this rule, but we can, let's say, slice your single channel optic into pieces and can illuminate it with only, and we can illuminate your DMD and we can project your DMD with only one MLA. This is our claim. And um, we patented uh, this idea and we are um, right now, we are looking for the right partnerships to bring that into mass production, like, um, like it was done for the, MLA for static images in 2012. So like 10 years uh, ago, it was in a pretty similar situation, uh, but this time we're talking about real digital images. So uh, anyone that um, uh, likes this idea or that uh, um, wants to cooperate on that idea, we are very happy to talk to. And uh, besides that, of course, uh, we are looking for customers for our modules that we sell right now. Um, for let's say customized image content, or we uh, can calculate M MLA optics for, for someone that is, let's say doing their own modules, but looking for very unique uh, image properties. So, um, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Marcel, uh, very, very impressive. And uh, I like a lot of your presentation because here you are Asking uh, really is a bilateral uh, question. You need the manufacturing as well uh, cooperation for the end user side. So this is really uh, the core of photonics. And I see that uh, there is a question in the chat, but I see also James from Nanovox raised the hands. So please, James, go ahead and then to the other. Uh, Marcel, uh, very impressive to uh, reduce the size. Uh, one of the things we've found, uh, we're, we're doing some Hogel uh, projection, is a crosstalk between the, um, uh, the optics in the MLA. Uh, would it benefit you to have baffles uh, in the uh, MLA structure nope. um, to prevent the, the crosstalk? <clears throat> well, the idea is based on crosstalk. That's what I can say uh, at this point. So, um, if you have a look at the principle of a, of a DMD, uh, you have some kind of off-axis uh, illumination and some kind of on-axis projection or uh, off-axis flat state and off-axis off state. So um, we use this, um, this property of a, uh, of a DMD and combine it with the, with the MLA idea. So we wish for, uh, let's say a tailored crosstalk and we, we can design the MLA in a way that the crosstalk is uh, really uh, fine-tuned uh, to optimize the image um, quality. Thank you. Yes, I see Robert from Lunius. Yes, um, I've got a question regarding the light source. What are you using? Is it a laser or an LED? It's independent on the light source. You can use um, uh, you can use laser. You can use collimated um, uh, white LED, and um, maybe that's a good point to come back to the RGB question um, from I think uh, Mat Matthias because I promised to to answer your question. Um, you don't need RGB LED in our case. You can use a white LED, and you can use, for instance, a color filter array, a pretty big color filter array on the MLA itself. Um, and you can just combine to a full spectrum image on the screen because yeah. our system is based on super positioning. So if you start with white light and you um, kind of calculate your image content in the correct way, 
uh, and you distribute color filters in the correct way, you can create RGB image on the screen and you only need white LED and one illumination path. Mm -hmm. it's simple, it takes out all the, right. all the rainbow effect, uh, yeah. something like that. It takes out all of this thing. Mm -hmm. and, um, one... the, demo, the demo you just showed, uh, Marcel, yeah. was that also an LED inside, a white LED? Yeah, white LED. Okay. It's pretty simple, it's only white LED, collimating optics, like one collimator, then depending on the space you have, maybe a prism, maybe no prism. Um, and then there is one MLA between prism and DMD. And, uh, and this, this thing does everything. It homogenizes because you have multiple images that superimpose. So you kick out uh, the, the, the fly's eye condenser in your illumination part. You can kick out this part because the mm -hmm. protection does any, re it. any requirements on the LED in terms of uh, bare window or dome or uh, emitting uh, surface area? Um, um, it, 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 it all depends on the Eton due you can uh, accept in your system, I would say it like that. So um, mm -hmm. um, 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 high, I would say high, high brightness, small chip is always a good thing. Um, but it, it depends on the, on the specs that, that you really want to have. So um, we, can, we can tune that. Okay, interesting. That, yeah. Very interesting, very interesting. Yes, I see that there is also a question from uh, uh, Leonard from Derema. Please uh, go ahead with your question. Uh, yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Yes, I asked. I, I saw, see this multitude of small lenses uh, gathering. Uh, a picture into one view. I bought sometime a camera from Litro, being a, a field uh, kind of camera, and they used lots of small lenses in their system. Is this anything similar to that? Um, well, yes and no, because Litro uh, is some kind of light field um, approach as well. Um, but they need a big macro uh, lens, a big um, objective so it's, it's more or less like a like a standard um uh, photo camera but there is an uh, a lens array in front of the sensor uh and what what they do they create some kind of a real light field information on the sensor in our case um we don't need a macro lens so in principle the easiest system you can imagine is uh, the outcoupling prism as the less optical part in the projection path so there's no need to have a bulk lens in front. Um, you can think of having one, but it depends on, on what, what you want to have as a, as a kind of image, image property again. So, but yeah, we do, we do light field projection, or let's say the idea is some kind of light field projection and they do some kind of um, light field uh, capturing. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's kind of negating each other, but uh, it was a kind of personal, uh, technical interest uh, causing me to ask the question. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. So oh, micro-optics. Micro-optics is a magic word. And I would like that uh, maybe my colleague Jeremy is uh, saying something about uh, what is doing Europe for free-form micro-optics. Jeremy, yes. please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just share my screen. OK. Okay. Can, can you see it yeah yes sure perfect so, so yeah we are speaking I'm, about fabulous Jerry. yeah i'm going to, to introduce fabulous to you uh fabulous is a European project um it actually uh, represents the full value chain of um and consists of European's leading companies and research and technology organization in the field of micro optics uh, this pilot line offers a full range of services from optical design to uh, pilot and volume producing including tooling, uh, material selection, quality control, and address all markets related to optics and micro optics. As you can see, we have a rear measures and display, uh, also automotive and lighting. Um, everything is synchronized to ensure a, a smooth and professional process to reduce lead times from several months to several weeks. Uh, and something really important is that Fabulous launches an open call uh, to support you with the implementation and integration of freeform micro optics and to bring your product to volume market. So 
it may be really interesting for you. And uh, um, so if you have some design and or prototype and you are looking to move uh, your development into pilot large scale production, please uh, feel free to contact Fabulous. You can see the, the, the contact on this slide or you can also contact me. Um, and I think that, that's all, uh, Antonio, about Fabulous. Yes, uh, thank you so much. So uh, a comment, this is a great opportunity for the European ecosystem on this strategic uh, segment of free form micro optics. And there is a lot of uh, good opportunities uh, also that we discussed during this uh, meeting. Yeah. So uh, I don't see no other questions coming. Uh, so, oh my God, it's already 1625. So we go on. Now I would like to have Raoul from Micro Releus and we will enjoy to learn how it's possible to texture uh, molds to get better feeling in uh, touching uh, and also to manufacturing uh, special modes for optics. Hello everyone. Hello Antonio. Thank you for your introduction. Can you see my screen right? Presentation mode now. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. Yes. Go. No. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the introduction again. I am Raul Garcia from the company Micro Relief. I, I will speak today about the femtosecond laser engraving for automotive lighting applications. So I will speak just one minute about who we are and about the femtosecond laser technology. And I will speak later about what we can do engraving lighting prototypes, mold microstructuring for lighting and mold texturing. So that's our company. That's uh, who we are. So we are a workshop, we are a service provider for industry. What we do is industrial engraving, laser texturing, and laser microstructuring since 1983. In 2013, we were the first uh, laser texturing service company in Spain. And since 2016, we give femtosecond laser service in five axes. There are big news in our company in this year, 2022 because we will be pioneers uh, giving service with a bigger and more advanced femtosecond laser machine. So we will be able to engrave to microstructure to texture uh, big molds, big inserts up to 1,700 kilograms in five axes. So bigger part than one meter. So what a femtosecond laser is? As the, most of you maybe know, it is an ultra short pulse duration laser. So there's almost no thermal effect over the material that gives us two main benefits. On one hand, because of this cold ablation, we can engrave over any uh, material. That's why we can engrave over PNMA or PC. And we can create microstructures uh, absolutely burr free. So what are, what are we doing with this technology in automotive lighting? We are doing microstructuring, we are creating microstructures and freeform micro optics in absolutely standard production inserts or plastic in APC prototypes. And we can achieve smaller details than using conventional technologies like milling machine or line sinking in the end. On the other hand, we can texturize those molds to achieve different properties like a controlled diffusion. So getting inside applications in the, in the automotive industry, lighting industry, in prototypes and production molds. In this example, in the Seattle on 2020, the signal mirror indicator, we engraved those uh, microstructures in the PMMA prototype, but also in the, uh, in the mold inserts to achieve this behavior in the light that was what uh, set engineers and designers expected. On the other hand, in this Cupra Tabascan concept car, what uh, the Cupra engineers and designers wanted, it was to achieve homogeneous light, uh, but coming from an LED placed perpendicular to the, uh, to the tail lamp in this case. So the idea was to obtain a new concept of tail lenses that let them to reach homogeneity from a perpendicular placed light source to achieve this 3D effect uh, in the tail lamps. So we engraved thousands and thousands of micro prisms that what they do is they get the light, which is coming from the top uh, in an homogeneous way to our eyes. Here we can see the three parts in the tail lamp. So the concept is based in this demonstrator. 
that we can see here how they illuminate in an homogeneous way to achieve different effects for, from the perpendicular light first. Just because of this uh, micro engraving of the microprisms in the part. So getting inside mold microstructuring, because of this cold ablation that we spoke before, we can engrave microstructures on molds absolutely bore free, very good tolerances with high quality surface finishing and with very sharp edges. This is a digital process, so there is a limitless design possibilities. We can engrave three, four micro optics, again, in absolutely standard molds and microstructures. Those are some examples of some uh, molds, uh, some inserts of molds engraved in high and low relief microstructures. And we can see in this example, the small py pyramid with pitch 200 micron with very good definition, no burr and no imperfection thanks to this technology. In this case here, we can see the engraving of a mold just to a demonstrator for a light guide. And we can see the injected part on the right that we can see the homogeneous light effect during all the, the light guide. In this specific example, this was for a customer uh, Dysalux, we engraved that micro pattern. You can imagine how small was uh, this pitch in absolutely standard mode. And here we can see the injected part and the comparison between the simulated value and the measured value. Here we have to understand that there is the tolerance of the laser, but there's the tolerance also of the plastic inject injection part. So plastic is getting inside the mold and is replicating the microstructures as good as it can. And we can see that even in such complicated parts for the plastic replication, the behavior, the comparison of uh, photometry analysis of measured uh, plastic injected part with the simulation was really close. In this image, we can see some other micro pillows engraved in the air vent, in the mold of the air vent of the set, it is, it is a 2021, to achieve this effect with the light on the air vent. Uh, we, did, we designed, we developed some light diffusion uh, textures from better homogeneity to better luminance with the femtosecond laser to have this diffusion uh, in the plastic injected part to avoid uh, the hot spot of the LED, for example. So when we designed those structures, repeatability and stability of the texture was very important, and also the diffusion quality and the luminance. We developed the structures with the femtosecond laser because Burr is having no influence on the diffusion. So it is a very controlled process, and we can replicate them in different steel for different molds, for example, achieving the same result. Those are some other examples on diffusion, some other capabilities that we can do with, uh, with uh, FEMTO in the engraving the mold. And to finish, we, we have in micro relief in our workshop, confocal and focus variation microscope to measure um, the inside tolerances requested for customer and small photometry laboratory to obtain basic measurements. So to finish, what we can offer with the femtosecond laser technologies, laser microstructuring, laser texturing, and industrial engraving services focused on maximizing the added value of the customer. We can offer this service on, on final part, for example, for, for serial, small serial production, or single part, we engrave a lot of prototypes, or in a production molds. So customer is sending us the mold that we engrave. Uh, who our customers are. We work directly for OEM, for tier one, tier two, mold maker, plastic injectors, etc. So thank you very much for your for your time and I'm here for any doubt you can have. Thank you so much, Raul. Uh, this is really, we are really covering all the value chain. So uh, I have just a question myself uh, is, uh, is uh, limited to plastic, is uh, so to polymer. Not we are not speaking about glass and uh, and or uh, crystals, because I'm thinking to the first uh, presentation of Swarovski that the. Well, if what I'm are you wrong, thinking then... about? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what are you thinking about, Antonio? <laughs> okay, Rafael, go ahead. We are on the same uh, line. <laughs> Yeah, and then I mean, the, uh, as you said, like the, the question is if you if you can maybe also work on different substrates, right? And um, yeah, in general, very impressive yeah? and interesting. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. We can, yeah, we can engrave over most of the materials thanks to the behavior of the femtosecond laser and this ultra, ultra short pulse duration uh, laser. Um, and then uh, we usually engrave on steel because we engrave the production molds. So that makes sense because you can have a very uh, cheap part, let's say, because it's plastic injected part with a lot of different functionalities thanks to this engraving on the mold. So final, the cost per part is very small. When we engrave glass or when we engrave a PMMA or a PC, it was in our case always for prototype purposes. So we did uh, before. In those materials, we have some limitation because our laser uh, is infrared. We work much better in, in steel than in other materials. But yes, we have done, uh, we have done projects for glass and for plastic. Thanks a lot for explanation. Thank you. That we have other two questions here in the chat, but please uh, go ahead. I see Mahmoud from Ficontech. So please make the question directly. And then I see also Dirima making another question. And also Matthias, great. Who is starting? Mahmoud, are you ready? Um, yeah, hi, thanks a lot for the um, presentation. I would, I would like to ask about the process. Uh, do we need a polishing process after a laser engraving on the mold? And do we need, uh, an, again, a polishing process after having the, uh, the uh, plastic part or not? Thank you. Thank you for the question. It is a very good uh, question because, of course, the process has some limitations. So we can achieve a very very shiny finishing in the in the inserts as you saw in the presentation but this is not polished we can achieve ra uh, around 100 nanometer but we cannot obtain smaller ra with the laser so for a lot of applications this is good enough for some other applications it is not good enough of course so when it is not good enough uh, you are asking if we need some uh, polishing after the engraving process. We have tried a lot of different methods. The problem is the polish uh, process. It is always causing some deformation on the microstructures. So if we are having, thanks to the femtosecond laser, very sharp edges, very good tolerances, and so on, when you polish, you are going to destroy those tolerances. So it is everything to think, uh, always to think about what you really need. So we usually do not polish uh, after the, the engraving process because the, the result is very shiny. So we speak with the customer and uh, usually the, the quality of the engraving is good enough. Okay, and just a quick question. I have noticed in the, um, in the slides that the focusing diameter is around 15 micron. Um, is it the smallest focusing diameter that we have achieved? It is the smallest. So we are currently working between 50 and 15, so we can change the machine length, calibrate again, and work with the laser spot diameter, 15 micron, 30, 30, sorry, 50 micron, 30 micron, 15 micron. So with the new machine that we are going to have this year, uh, we can have until 100 micron, but not smaller than 15 micron. Okay, and do you use a microscopic objective for focusing the light or normal lenses? No, 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 no. Uh, there's a touch proof with the machine, a Renishaw Sonda. Yeah. So it is integrated in the same head of the machine. So the Renishaw proof is, is going down. We touch the part and then uh, everything is aligned. So when we touch the part, we perfectly know when it is in the space. Something which is critical, of course, because machine is in seven axes. So it's five mechanical axes plus two optical axes. So we need to perfectly know where the part is inside the machine. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think there is a lot of uh, technology in these uh, machines, incredible machine. I see that uh, Matthias raised the hands uh, and then uh, also after Matthias uh, Lennart uh, from uh, the Rema maybe has also another question. And uh, also yeah. Andrea from uh, EV Group. So a lot of questions, great. So I will uh, quickly ask, uh, Raul, just a short question regarding the manufacturing uh, process. Uh, looking to all these tiny optics, which you can laser in, 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 the, in the tool, where is uh, today the, um, the trade-off in between um, yeah, molding quality 
and um, resolution of your uh, optical elements. Do we uh, facing there uh, some issues uh, today, or is this all fine? Thank you very much for your interesting question as well. Yeah, we have done a lot of study about that, of course, because you are right that you can have some limitation in the injection process. But we are realizing that depending on the structure, of course, you, if it's kind of Fresnel length with ratio 1-1 one, one and so on, it is difficult for the plastic to get inside those holes, of course. So when, when we are in this uh, kind of structures with pitch 150 microns, something like that, which is quite critical for the plastic, we are usually achieving replication of 75, 80, 85% of okay. the plastic, okay, which is good enough for the behavior of this lens. Uh, we are achieving until 95% uh, more or less replication. So it depends on the structure. Of course, if the structure is high relief in the mold, it is easier for the plastic to replicate it. Yeah. And then for most of processes, the, everything will be more efficient because the light is coming inside the plastic part and will be more efficient as well in the replication. So it depends on each case. It's not the same uh, to engrave half a microsphere or a pyramid or whatever. So it depends on the cases, but most of the time we are between 80 and 95% of replication. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, I see that, uh, okay, uh, Andrea, will you comment? Yeah, thank you, Antonio. Um, as we discussed a lot of microlenses, microlens arrays and holographic structures um, today in this meeting, I think I have, um, um, my slides could also go in the direction which is of interest. Let me just share. I think you should now see my screen with the yes, slide. Uh, perfect. Yeah, perfect. So thanks again. So my name is Andrea Kneidinger. I am a business development manager at EVG. EVG is an equipment supplier for wafer processing um, systems for the whole semicon industry, but also for the automotive industry. So any bond to be done on a wafer level, um, we can support. And in particular, which is of interest today um, on this meeting, we deliver equipment for UV-based nano-imprint lithography for the manufacturing of micro-optics, nanostructures, microlens array, and all the previously mentioned applications. And here EVG provides a complete product line, including different um, single step imprinting systems, as well um, step and repeat systems for efficient master scaling. And I hope this uh, does um, go in the right direction you're thinking of. Um, it's often the question how to come from a single die with an optical design on it to a high value manufacturing. Um, and this can be seen here. You start with a single die, which is often made by E-beam lithography or two photon polymerization. Then you do a UV-based step and repeat imprint with our EVG 770 to get a fully populated waiver scale master, which can be up to 300 millimeter. And this one um, you use for the following process, which consists of two steps. Mm, first, a working stamp waiver is fabricated out of the step and repeat master, and which is then used for the actual imprint. So from a single um, step and repeat master, multiple working stamps can be generated, uh, which are, as mentioned above, used for those multiple final imprints. This approach avoids wearing out the original template a lot. And finally, <clears throat> here, you end up with multiple imprinted waivers with a desired design on it, with the optical structures, nanostructures, microlens arrays, whatever you want. Um, and this approach um, allows more devices to be produced simultaneously, increasing your throughput and driving down the overall production costs. So EVG has the tools and now it allows to scale a single die optical design to a fully high volume um, waivers. It's a very large scaling um, factor. And due to lack of time, I shortly switch to the next slide. 
Um, this slide should show a couple of reverence structures we did in the past. Let there be different kind of micro optics from convex to concave, also DOEs. Um, we can also go as mentioned down to nanostructures, waveguides, holographic optical elements, um, all the mentioned um, before. And also our tools are able to do 3D stacking of optics, which uh, can be seen here. And those modules or those devices can be afterwards integrated in different kinds of sensors, projectors, or other electronics, which are shaping the future in terms of augmented reality, head-up displays, um, LiDAR, micro LED, and such. So if you need high volume manufacturing equipment for manufacturing of micro optics, I think EVG is a good place to go for. That's all from my side. Short, briefly, I hope in time. <laughs> Yes, so far. You are still unmute, Antonio. <laughs> okay, sorry. That's uh, after two years. I'm not after yet. Two years. It's still like really. <laughs> no. Okay. Thank you so much, Andrea. Uh, I see that uh, Patrick from SUS uh, raised the hands, uh, and also I saw that uh, Rolando made some comments in the chat. So who is speaking first? Patrick and then Rolando. Really welcome to have yeah, that's, that's quite impressive. And I saw on your slides that you can offer 300 millimeter mm -hmm. uh, equipment yep. that's fully automated. Yep. Can you comment on the sizes of the lenses you can replicate on that kind of equipment? And does that mean you can do the full process in a fully automated way, including yep. demolding of, mm -hmm. of the wafers? Mm -hmm. So uh, recently we um, launched our new tool, the EVG 7300, and here you can do, as we call it, the smart new technology, which can really go down to nanostructures and easily convert the tool to lens molding, which can go up to like really lens sizes with a, a three digit um, microns. So this tool is really dedicated for 300 millimeters nanostructuring but also up to like really lenses. So this tool is dedicated for exactly these cases, can be um, used as manually, but also high, um, fully automated version. So to say in this way. But a good question, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. You're welcome. Orlando, what is your mind? Hi, Antonio. To hear me, nice to see you in my new role. Um, hi. hi. So uh, I was amazed by the, uh, the uh, presentation of Raul, with whom I discussed a few weeks ago in a different uh, role uh, when I was uh, still uh, leading uh, Fabulous. Today, I just wanted to make a comment uh, since I started my, my new job uh, with, with Fentoprint. So I, I see um, first talk from Raphael. It was mentioning glass and glass came again on the table. Um, when you're talking about microstructuring of, uh, of glass uh, at Fentoprint, we have a very powerful technology that allows us to really scribe or write or print, 3D print into glass. And it may be interesting for the uh, community here uh, both for fast prototyping and then also uh, for uh, mastering or small series. So if you are not familiar, I'm sorry, I don't have a slide because I've just started. I start to get familiar with uh, the technology and all uh, the, 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 the slide decks. But uh, if you're interested, just check at the website and then you can contact us or me if you want to know more about this, this technology. We can do a lot of uh, incredible things also combine optics with other mechanical or non-optical uh, components. That was my input, Antonio. Thank you so much, Orlando. And first of all, uh, big luck. I, really, I would like to wish you uh, good luck for the new challenge. Thank and, you, uh, yeah. So now he's closing the meeting with uh, from SUS Micro Optics. So please uh, make uh, the great close of this meeting. Wow. Thank you very much. Um, let me see. Why doesn't this work? Uh, 
Can you see? Wait, I have to minimize this window. Do you see the presentation mode or the? Yes, uh, sure. Um, so, this is the first one. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. planar micro optic uh, number five. Uh, yes, I know there is a problem here with my keyboard doesn't accept keys. Okay. Um, so yes, I like I like to quote uh, Jose. <laughs> He said there's a micro optics revolution going on in Europe. So I like to start with a quote. So the micro optic revolution and we apply it in automotive lighting. So uh, there were a lot of uh, talks already today about micro optics uh, for different application, in particular for, for projection designs and projectors and, and, and uh, diffusers for display illuminations. Um, so we have been in this micro optics business for, for many, many years since 1998, so for 24 years. And we have done a lot in the domain of, um, uh, of fiber coupling, diffractive optics, UV illumination. So, but you can see here from our numbers recently or in the last few years that are, we entered in the domain of automotive and it quickly took over a large portion of our, our, our business. And, and it's also great because it's, um, it also enables new technology for us. And, and also we are fully IITF um, qualified. That means we have a completely new quality standard in-house, which, which enables a lot of new technologies and a lot of new uh, approaches to new markets. So uh, one of the markets we are in, uh, light carpets or welcome lights. So which is basically, uh, a little MLA based system that has been shown if you already a couple of times, which actually homogenizes the light. So what you do here, you have a little MLA, I'm not gonna to get too much into details has been shown before. So that means you have an M micro lens array and you have a little slide or a little chromium pattern inside that projects an image. And what is the cool thing here is you can really do this with a grazing incident. So you can be in the rocker box down here underneath the car and you can project from a few centimeters up to several meters and you can be extremely bright. So here you see a typical application. You see the optical element here is very small and, and the whole projection system here is just a few cubic centimeters. And, and you can get rid of all types of issues that you have maybe on your LED light source or on your collimator because you have, um, over 100, 140 depends on the design of optical channels which superimpose the final optical projected image. So that means because of this projection, you can mix light, you can um, re, re shuffle light and in order to have a very nice and uniform picture. And at the same time, you have a very high quality and sharp picture because the micro lens array each lens projects into infinity and can create this way a very nice and sharp image. So you saw uh, <clears throat> different applications already are on the market. So you see uh, um, these different light carpets and blowing has presented things. So on the right side, you see a new more uh, future applications. And so the idea is that you present something on the street that, that it becomes safer. It was mentioned earlier to have Color, colors projected. For now, the the laws in the in the in the uh, in, in the automotive domain and in traffic regulations do not allow projections on the street of colors in Europe and the U.S. So this is slowly changing, or there are ideas to change this, especially for safety application. Maybe not for decorative lighting, but definitely for safety. So that means uh, there will be in the next few years. Uh, changes in the regulation that allow us to project uh, uh, certain patterns, dynamic patterns on the street. And, and you have to be extremely compact. If you want to be inside a headlamp or inside a, an indicator or under, still underneath a rocker box, a rocker uh, panel, you have to be extremely small, just a cubic centimeter or two. And for that, you need micro optics and micro, micro lens designs. So we do that with wafer level optics as Andrea already mentioned. Thank you for the introduction. So we use of course, 
similar technology from Zeus Microtech in our production line. We have uh, we just opened a new big clean room where we where we where we could uh, increase our production by fourfold now uh, in in volume and capacity. So we have this big clean room where we do these wafer level optics for 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 these types of applications. So what do we do? We have a basically a simple stamp that um, that is somehow micro machined by a master and that pushes into polymer and then is removed. So this is a very basic process, but you have to be extremely precise. It's not injection molding. It is a wafer level process that we basically lend from the semiconductor industry. So the semiconductor industry has developed over many decades wafer level processing and we built all the micro optics on these wafer level technologies. So, and uh, so what we basically have is a toolbox. So you can imagine different types of stems that create different types of shapes. And when we put them all together, you can have uh, uh, all types of configurations with free form optics, with a combination of, of, uh, of convex and concave optics, you can have 100% uh, fill factor, you can individual lenses and you combine all of this. And the nice thing is, and this is a big distinction to, to other technologies, we can have embedded shields or, or, or metal patterns that block the light, that block stray light, and that are then responsible for, for very high image qualities. So when you look in the market uh, here on the right side, so the take rate of interior lighting has increased dramatically. So in different uh, in different car categories. So from the small cars all the way to the big cars. So GKL are the big cars and UKL are the small cars. So even in the small basic cars, you see more and more people using and implementing lighting effects or light effects. So the light is a new chromium. It was mentioned by I think it was Volkswagen in the past, and and it's true. So people like like to have all these new features in their car. So, you, and and you see here, it's an example of interior, of an interior of a car, of a, where, where you can imagine to project to all different places. And this will be only possible with very, very small light sources. But you, what you also see here, you need new designs. And this is why it was very interesting to see the talks from the optical uh, designers earlier and the software makers for optical design. And this helps us a lot because you have to, we use all the latest optics tools in order to be able to design things. So this is a very busy slide is just to say, we, we started off of course with planar surfaces for decorative and safety applications, but now we can fully design on curved surfaces, non-planar optics for interior designs, for interior projections. And we can do that easily with our with our, our optical tools now. So we can have a forward and backwards calculations. We can we can fully um, how do you say uh, parameterize this volume that has to be projected onto, and um, and this is um, all straightforward now. So what comes next? So of course maybe you've seen it. So now the next big challenge is of course our ultra slim headlights. So uh, so there are companies now presenting it publicly that they're using micro optics in the headlamps. So since about one year now, the first cars are on the market, not even maybe half a year. And, and, and it's getting a strong trend. So you see here, so this used to be a small headlamp. Now it's even smaller. It's fully integrated in the design, just very narrow slits. So here, these are even hidden. And if you look at the, uh, Lucid design. So Lucid presented a lot of nice uh, um, technology presentations where they where they show how they do this. So they have this nice stack of components that make it very compact. So they have this integrated collimators. Here they have an MLA, and then they have the whole thing in a box with with a bunch of LEDs behind it where they can even do ADB. So they can adapt the output of the pattern uh, dynamically and depending on the situation. And, and the nice thing is that I mentioned earlier, so with each channel that you have here, you can present a different pattern. So you have all fully integrated and fully self-aligned already. You have all these different patterns and all these different channels. And depending on which illumination you turn on or off, you get a different pattern. And this way you have also a dynamic 
degree of light shaping. And at the same time, since you have so many channels, so these are, I don't know, estimate a couple thousand channels. So depending on how many channels you use, you completely smooth out issues that you might get during fabrication or, 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 or um, other tolerances in your application, uh, in your fabrication, you can smooth those out with so many channels and you get in the far field a really nice photometrically correct pattern. So always a question, um, the epic questions, uh, what, what can you do for us? What can we do for you? So we can have very small optics we can make. We can put lights in a very small area. We can put lighting systems in a very small volume. And this is of course a, a huge opportunity for, for a simple and, and compact system. At the same time, um, we have to look at uh, the design flexibility. So the tier ones, the OEMs, they have to a little bit adapt to, to our technology. They have to have, uh, um, but at the same time, we offer flexibility. We need high power LEDs with a very small Eton view. That means a very small uh, um, illumination area with a small angular range. And the better the light source, the better the output but we can also offer high efficiency, so low energy consumption. So that means uh, in this context, we, we, we need to work with the, um, on a system level with the OEMs or with the tier ones. And, um, but uh, at the same time, for now, it's mostly, mostly premium cars and individualized systems, but of course the idea is to get into all types of cars. And for that, you need to do cost reduction. And this cost reduction, of course, is a big challenge, but we heard today there are new technologies, new ideas, how to get more functionality, more equipment into this domain. And, uh, and of course, we work on this every day. We, we make our processes more efficient. We, we get the latest equipment on the market and, and uh, uh, from Zeus Microtech. And it's, it's a really powerful technology that offers a lot of opportunities. Thank you for your time. Hello, are you still muted or? Antonio, are you here? Antonio, where did he go? <laughs> Antonio, you're muted. Okay, can continue maybe. If you have some question. Well, I I'm... can see. Showed my last slide. <laughs> oh, sorry, the Zoom crashed exactly now. Uh, so, <laughs> thank. But okay, I was able to to listen all the presentation of Wilfred. Uh, great. Who who has some questions here for uh, Wilfred? So. Nobody would like to comment. I think that really uh, the presentation from Wilfred will really summarize all of this uh, meeting of today. Here we have a lot of uh, challenges, but has uh, started the Wilfred. The micro optic revolution in automotive is really beginning now. So, I would like to share uh, maybe some final comments uh, and then we can really start also to think about. We have uh, so many things to, to, to make. So just a moment, I'm share screen. This one, share screen, presentation mode. Okay. So really, I... <laughs> Micro optics, that's the key word for myself. And here uh, we have a lot of uh, challenges. Uh, DLP present uh, a lot of advantages in display application inside and inside the car. Uh, photonics is really a, a key technology to offer customization and to make differentiation on uh, to the different brands using the same basic technologies. Uh, is important, uh, we learned that it is very important to reduce the size and also the efficiency of the components, especially 
uh, when we are speaking about full electrical cars. Now, uh, power management is becoming more and more relevant. Last but not least, uh, it's important also to assure replication and quality for mass production. So uh, a still uh, challenge is to deal with uh, testing and measuring a system during production. But uh, here we are. Uh, is really opening uh, a new approach to automotive market. And uh, yeah, we see that the uh, company like Swarovski is really, uh, is going, is coming into this market, thanking to the Photonics technologies. So with this word, I would like to uh, thanks all the participants to this uh, exciting meeting. And uh, really, I welcome uh, you to the next uh, Monday for the next meetings. And now we close the meeting, five o'clock, 5.5 o'clock, it's perfect on time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you very much. Bye-bye, thank you.